What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Your new subscribers, I'm Barbas. Today we're at Sheldon's house. on the back here you have the numbers so it starts from number one and then it goes over here to number nine so this is a, a 34 pin connector and what we're basically going to do in, going to be doing is so we're going to be matching up all of the the functions here so for example injector one is going to be going to pin 19 as you can see it tells you what pin everything goes to and we're just going to be populating the connector with all of the cavities that we're going to need so that's basically what we're going to be doing and that makes it really easy having this guide to help you um, get all of that done um, we also will be using the stock coolant temperature sensor and we will be adding in an air temperature sensor but we're going to use the stock wiring so we'll add a GM temperature air temperature sensor make sure you guys are smacking that like button because this is gold middle spec wire so this is 20 gauge but because because of the military because of the specification of the wire it's really small it's smaller than regular wire you see this is 20 gauge, but usually a 20 gauge wire would be a lot, a lot um, thicker than this. But because it's mil spec, it's a lot smaller, so you end up making everything lightweight, and so it's much, just a much better wire. Wow. So right now, what we're doing is we're creating a new map. Yeah, because that kind of define what inputs and outputs we're going to use on that. So all we did was just go to file, no, and then just name the file, right? Yeah, but well, right now we're gonna have to define everything in there. Like for right now we're gonna put, we have to put in the engine size, so it's uh, 1600 cc. So we'll put that in there. And most important, we need to define the trigger trigger is what um, cam and crank signals the ECU is going to see so right here we're going to go I'm going to use the B16C which is as you can see here on cam it tells you it's on cam 24 teeth and one home tooth so that's what we need here and we need to change this to reluctor because it's a two wire sensor and we change all of these This is something I always enable, the TDC offset table, just so we can actually sync the timing with the timing light. And as you go up in RPM, if there is a change in the, um, in the offset between the crank timing and what the ECU sees, we can always adjust it in the offset angle table. Um, so for fuel, we're gonna go in here and we're gonna say it's gonna be volumetric efficiency and the fuel type is going to be flex fuel and as we do this it's going to give us an error and tell us that we need to enable a flex fuel sensor it's okay we'll do that and here we have a bunch of um, tables some of those we're going to use some of those we won't use so right here we're going to use post that correction air temp correction cranking fuel amount priming pulse and we'll basically use all of those. Um, ignition, we gotta change this, and we're gonna say this is gonna be a distributor based ignition because we're not doing coil and plug as yet. That's something we're gonna go to later down. So we're gonna do distributor, and that's gonna take care of that. And we're also gonna leave most of those, but this we're gonna take this off because we don't really need post that correction for ignition however we will use the zero demand ignition table and we're going to go into functions and we're going to define our flex fuel just so we can get rid of that error so we go down here and we 
look for flex fuel composition sensor right here and we're going to define that so we're going to use we have two digital pulse inputs so we're going to use dpi1 and as you can see once we selected that it um, changed from red to yellow and the edge is always rising and usually the stock calibration works fine for for this zero 50 hertz is zero 150 hertz is 100 percent ethanol so what that tells you is if the sensor is at 50 hertz um, anything 50 percent below it's zero percent ethanol at 150 hertz it's seeing 100 percent ethanol most times will be between say 50 and 60 percent ethanol and in the summer we might get up to like 70 so that's fine we can leave that and this what we're going to do is we're going to enable this uh, because of the nature of the flex fuel sensor, we'll kind of want to keep the max RPM where it's going to um, be sampling. So we're going to cap it at 3000 RPM. So if the, if the fuel composition kind of the sensor reads a change, whatever it read at 3000 RPM, it's what it's going to use throughout the RPM range. Reason being, it's just because as you go up in RPM range and the fuel flow changes um, over, the, over the return, we do have an issue where we can get a different reading and then the ECU might be trying to compensate for that different reading. So that's the reason why we kind of want to lock it at 3000 RPM. So that's that. So that gets rid of our error that we have because we selected um, flex fuel. And what by selecting the flex fuel here, what that does is it actually gives the ECU, tells the ECU that you're going to be using um, different fuel. So once the ECU is always going to be referencing the flex fuel sensor, so it doesn't matter what once you tune the car on um, on pump gas. Once we set the, the fuel composition, once we set the fuel composition, all it's going to do is it's going to look at it and it's going to make all the calculations in the background. So see right here, it just tells you at 20%, um, it's basically going to be adding 19.5, no, 19.3% of fuel. So all that calculation is already been done in the background. So as the tuner, you don't have to worry about all of that kind of stuff. So you can just go in and, and tune the car pump gas, and the EC is going to make all those those compensation tables for you, those compensation values for you when you select that flex fuel on that flex fuel option. So yeah. Um, so that's all we're going to enable for right now. We have the trigger. Um, we're going to enable, we're going to have to disable quick start because we don't have a trigger that supports that. So we're going to disable quick start. And um, yeah, that should be, that should be everything we need on the trigger setting. And we're gonna go to uh, functions, and we're gonna have to disable a few functions. For right now, here, hold on. Let me switch. Right, so we're just gonna go through some of those settings. We're going to enable. No, we don't have VTEX. Sorry. So we don't have to enable that. Fuel pump we will be using so we're gonna have the ECU um, controlling the fuel pump as well um, the other thing we need to enable is that is the auto sensor I'm looking for it auto control so see we get another error 
So we gotta go in here and define where we're gonna put the auto sensor. So we're gonna say overall and we're not gonna be using a CAN based wideband, we're gonna be using analog voltage. So now we're gonna select which one we're gonna use. And on this one, we're gonna use AV3, which is what's designated for the map sensor. But because we're gonna be using the map sensor that's built into the Haltech, because it comes, it comes in with the map sensor port right here, a three bar map sensor, because we're using that, we can use, we can repurpose AV3 for something else. So we're gonna repurpose it for the wideband. And now once we did that, that's it. We just come in and we click apply and that should be that um, let's see if there's anything else we need to enable for startup we have um, ah yes we need to uh, enable these two the tachometer we need to enable that and we're going to define that on so what you see here is DPO those are called digital pulse outputs and because we use the distributor for ignition, as you can see, we're less one ignition output because we're using ignition one as the, the firing for the coin. So we can repurpose all of these outputs for the ignition for different, for different functions. So we just gain three outputs, but when we change to coin and curve, we're going to be using all those outputs. So anyway, um, on DPO for the for the tachometer we're gonna use DPO DPO what's that DPO2 so as you can see it's on pin A1 so that's kind of why we do that because now we know for the tachometer output it has to go in this pin right here on number one the other thing that we have to pay attention to so it says active state the active state means um, what does it trigger it out if it's the high side or low side so right now it's gonna be triggering on the low side so we're gonna leave that selected as low side and we're gonna apply that and the second one we're gonna enable is the thermal fan and that's what's gonna turn on the fan at whatever temperature we tell it to so again we have to select an output for it and we're gonna select DPO3, which is on pin, pin A23. So once we select that, we again say, so this is gonna trigger it. It's gonna, the issue is gonna send a negative signal to the relay to activate the fan. And right here, we can just go right in here and say trigger source coolant temperature sensor. So we can use a range of diff different sensors to trigger the, the coolant fan, but obviously we want it to be triggered by the coolant temperature sensor. And right here, we're gonna change this to enable it at 180. And anything under 175, the coolant fan is gonna be disabled. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna check this box that says disable when engine is stopped. When you check this box, what it does is when you have key on, it doesn't keep the fan on, which you then in turn can drain the battery. So we always check this box and then we click apply. So, so far we've covered almost everything to set up. Now when I'm gonna be pinning it to the connector, I can just go right here and say, say UI report list wiring allocations this side it tells me everything that I need to connect where I need to connect everything so as you can see here it tells me where my throttle position intake air temp my coolant temp flex fuel is on DPI 1 um, boost control all of that kind of thing is already right there for me so it's really easy for me to just pin it onto the connector because it already tells me the pin and it tells me what I'm using it for and you have all the system references here for the cam and crank angle sensor and all that kind of stuff. Um, so the second thing, we, the last thing we're gonna have to do is we'll just have to define the fuel injectors. Because we're gonna be using the STI-565 injectors, 
um, we have to go in here and tell the, the ECU what size injectors we're going to be using so it will know how to how much in, how much fuel to flow so when we go in here we go to stage one and we go to flow and what we're going to do is we're going to change it here to 565 pretty simple but this is where we need to really make a change um, in the dead time so what that is is the dead time it kind of tells the ECU there's a lag between when the ECU sends the signal to fire the injector and when the injector actually fires. So there needs to be a compensation for that so the fuel can be, can be correct or it can be accurate. Um, if you do not define that, you may have idle issues, um, running issues, which can always be tuned, tuned out, but it's always better to have that information. So, because I do work with Subarus as well, I can go to, um, let's see where this is, I can go to my top software and I can get the scaling for the injectors, the dead time, and I'll just use the scaling in there and put it into the, into the Haltech and that will complete what we need to build the base map for the Civic. comes up I'll be able to um, to pull that data up so yeah so here we go I'll just select um, I'll just select the car those injectors came out of um, click the key and then what I'm gonna go to is I'm a little rusty on on the car because I don't really tune car that much. So we have to go to injectors and here, here it is. So usually um, that's um, that's called a couple of different things. If we go over here on Haltech, we can see it's called dead time. So it says injection injection stage one dead time. But when we go over to the carb software, the carb calls it fuel injector latency. So it's the same thing, but it's just a different name. So this is the, the data we have here with Cobb. So what we're gonna do is we're going to change our scaling in the Haltech to match the scaling in the Cobb. So the injector data is basically the same. So we have breakpoints at 6.5 volts, 9 volts, 11.5, 14 volts, and 16.5 volts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our table editor here and we're gonna change this to 6.5 volts and our second break point is at 9 volts. We're gonna change this to 9 volts. Our third break point is 11.5. So we're gonna change this to 11. Our fourth is 14. Okay, so here we have a little problem. So I just need to delete this axis, this column, delete that one. And then uh, go say 14. Put 14 in here now. Then our last one is going to be 16.5 volts. So once we apply this, we're going to see our breakpoints change right here. And now we can then add the data from here over there. So then that will be accurate data. So. change this to 
two. Let's see what we're going eight one. And at 16.5 volts, we have uh, 0 0.67. And as you can see a trend, as the voltage increases, the dead time also decreases. So what that tells you that at lower voltage, there's more of a, of a latency before the injector fires. So which is also a good indicator that we need to make sure our electrical system is always up to snuff. Um, so we can, we can have accurate injector control. So, this is basically all of the settings we really need. So we just, I'll just save this file right now. Um, under the Honda tab and I'll just give it a unique name. And I usually put the injectors that it's scaled for. So this is just to get a, a base map. Yeah, that's everything just that we map. they use explain. You yeah. guys hear that? That's pure gold. He just gave you guys step by step how to set this up. Um, just for shits and giggles, what we'll do is we'll just uh, just for startup, we'll just set our our red line um, to six thousand RPM just for the startup and tuning and our cut pressure see this is a very important thing right now boost cut is set to 21 psi so that we're going to drop it right down to 10 psi until we figure out what the wastegate pressure is um, the other thing is with boost control as you can see the table is all set head to zero so that's good but what we're going to do uh, boost control is we're going to change our boost control to closed loop so what that really tells you is um, if your boost is off so like let's say we're targeting 10 pounds of boost and um, we're somehow hitting eight Six, the EC will try and add duty cycle to get to that 10 pounds of boost. So we're going to use closed loop boost control instead of using open loop. And what we're going to do, because I kind of know the, the uh, MAC valves that I'm going to use on the car, so the MAC valve doesn't really start working until like 10 10% duty cycle. It doesn't really do anything and it kind of maxes out at about 89 so we just do 90 percent max duty cycle so it kind of gives the issue so the issue knows hey I'm all, it's always going to pulse it at 10 at 10 percent so when you start adding when you start adding duty cycle then then you will see what the, the boost actually start to change um, so We've got that set up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the target pressure. I'm just getting everything set up so it's pretty easy. And what I what I will do is I will change this table here. So I'm gonna add an extra an extra axis to it. And the axis is going to be flex fuel. So what's it's going to be? It's going to be right here. 10 uh, as you see I'll go up in composition so I'm gonna stop at 80 because anything over 70 60 percent ethanol content I will have the car give all the all of the boost that I want it to give at that so as you can see what happens here is I'm going to go I'm going to 
uh, go here and from say 3000 rpm and that's a very inter interesting thing with boost control you never really want to ask for too much boost too early so i kind of don't ask for much boost before i know the turbo is going to spoil so like with a 70 millimeter turbo it's not going to it's not going to make 12 15 pounds at 3000 rpm so you shouldn't ask for that because what's going to happen is the boost control system is going to try and hit that boost and when the turbo can make it it's going to be it's going to overshoot it because there's a bunch of duty cycle in there so what we're going to do is anything under 40 percent 40 percent um, ethanol content we're going to keep that we're going to keep that at say let's just say gonna target 13 pounds and when we get to when we get to say 50 let's just say we're gonna target 15 5 or let's just say 16 and We'll keep this a secret. We're not gonna tell you how much we're gonna run anything over sixty percent. Anything over sixty percent. So, so that's we we basically just set up the boost, the boost table, and um, we just have the base the base duty cycle right here. So this is what it's gonna try and the duty cycles. There you guys have it. That's how you get a base map, and. This is a really long video, so I'm just gonna go ahead, cut it right here, and upload this, and we'll continue part two in the next one. Peace out. Catch you guys on the next one.